It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Folks, it's a book called It's a Wonderful Unfinished Life by Carla Cringer. Uh, and what's this book about? Well, let me tell you, folks. This is the story, and you're going to want to listen to this show, folks. There's a lot of great lessons in, uh, from this book. This is a story about Jojo Gelati. He had a wonderful, unfinished life. And this is also a story about a family left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives after Jojo was taken in a senseless, 100% preventable tragedy. And I want to welcome Carla to the show. Carla, great book. It's, it's a fabulous book. Thank you. And this is certainly the story about your daddy, okay, uh, who was taken unexpectedly uh, for, by a person who was a drunk driver. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, I know when I saw the picture in the back, I know who your daddy is, okay? And he's well, he was well known in the greater Hazleton area. But however, those people who are watching us in Pottsville and all the different areas, the story in this book is fantastic. Let's go back to, you know, uh, um, your life when your dad was alive, okay? W what was the, the prelude to before uh, that tragic day? Um, he was a happy-go-lucky kind of guy. He's somebody that could make it just about the hardest of hearts uh, bring tears, the laughter. That's the kind of person that probably was his greatest gift is his um, ability to make people laugh. Um, I can't say my dad was rich in material things, um, but he had a way, a knack of just drawing people to him. Um, when um, we had the viewing, over 500 people you know, nonstop the line went for, for three, four and a half hours. It just seemed, you know, you're, you're, you, you seem, it goes like a blink, but at the same time seems hard. But well, What I want to do is, and I want to get to that point, but what I want to do is, is I want the viewers to see, here you were, you had a great life, you know, your dad and everything was going fine. You were looking to get a job, okay, mm -hmm. and it says here even, you know, you were praying to get your job and Tell me the, um, the, the, what happened was you were someplace uh, and um, you were at, um, uh, I forget where it was, where Psych you got, the psychic, you, where, yeah. where the psychic, yeah, mm -hmm. where, where were you? Um, it was actually at the Ramada Inn up, at, up in Hazleton, I oh. think it was the Ramada at that time, That's it was what five it was, right? years yeah, ago. Yeah. And um, who were you with? I was with my husband and my daughter, right. something I was just always curious about, it was just kind of a fluke thing, and oh. honestly... I went to just see what it was about, and uh, you know, I always wanted to have a psychic reading, yeah. but it was like one of those things. Where, do you really want to go there? Do you, you know? Do I believe? Or don't I believe? So and, what happened? Uh, so I, I did, I, and all I wanted to know, honestly, I had been waiting for news about this job, you really and I just wanted, wanted to know. You I wanted just wanted that job. I just wanted the job, and I just so wanted prayer, to know. So you went, the, you went, the, you went, you asked God for the prayer. So, yeah, now you went to the yeah, psychic. and I, and honestly, so what was, happened when you went to the psychic? Um, she made a really scary prediction. Um, well, she, first card she turned over, I, I settled on, um, she gave me an option for a variety of readings, and she asked, um, I settled on a tarot card reading. After seeing people kind of walk around, there was a guy there reading heads, touching heads, I didn't want anybody touching my head, and some people that were in front of me had talked about this woman being very accurate, so I took a chance and had, um, had a tarot card reading, and the first card she turned over, which in my recollection was, she referred to it as the angel of death, and I panicked. I mean, I felt the color drain from my face, and I teared up, and she said, relax, it could be the death of a relationship or the end of a job, which I wanted a job to end, so um, I was really hoping that's all it was. But um, she did a first round, and she described a lot of things about me personally that were going on in my life, people in my life. Um, and then she came across the card, and she kind of threw me for a loop, and she asked me, um, she asked me, did I have a problem with alcohol? Yeah, she and said, I, you have a drinking problem. Yeah, and I was like, I, I think I, I got a little speechless, and I got very defensive, and I'm like, no, and I almost felt like, I, like she thought I was lying, and I said, I don't. And she said, um, do you have someone in your family who has a problem with drinking? And I tried to think there were some things going on and kind of made a connection to someone else. And I was like, well, that might make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then three more times, two more times during the course, so a total of three times during the course of the reading, she told me that there was a person with a problem with alcohol that was going to bring a lot of trouble to me and my family. And um, 
when she, she continued, she went on to the next, like went through a section of cards and then went, topped the first card with a second card. And when she turned that card over, it was the angel of death again. And she predicted that within six months, I was going to have a death in my family. That was, that was blunt. Yeah. That, that was, was shocking. That was so extreme. how did you feel then? I was, Who? I was, I was scared. And then she, she kind of eased my mind. And I know this sounds selfish. Um, she's like, it won't be an immediate family member. So I just took it like my immediate family was safe. And, you know, I, I had no idea how accurate her reading would be until um, I don't remember if it was that very Sunday before the tragedy or if it was the Sunday so before So your dad that. was well, so well known, they called him the unofficial mayor of McAdoo mm -hmm. and Claire's. Um, now, the personality, what kind of relationship did you have with your father? Very, very close relationship. I mean, my dad would be there in a heartbeat if I needed anything. Um, you know, he's one of those guys I'd often come home, find a ta and a loaf of Italian bread. He used to get it from this bakery down in Tamaqua. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'd come home and find a couple loaves of bread on my front porch. Sometimes I'd find him sitting on the front porch waiting for me to come in. You never knew. He'd always just kind of pop in and out. Um, and the, the lessons you get from your parents, okay, and, and, and sometimes uh, younger people go through an area where they feel they know more than their parents. Because I, when I was going to college, I knew a lot. I knew more than my parents, of course, of course. And then when I graduated, then, and the smarter I became, the dumber I became. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my father and mother became very smart, as we know. And uh, your family was very close family, right? Yes, yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, so, you know, enjoying your dad, enjoying your, your, your parents, okay? Uh, your father... Uh, uh, had a lot of great lessons, like all fathers and mothers have. They have different things. There's a, there's a thing here where you said, uh, making you feel special, and it says, Mother Teresa once said, and I think this is great, we cannot do great things on this earth, only small things with great love. Mm -hmm. Love in the family is so very important, okay? And you had that love. Okay, so now what happens is... Um, knowing your dad and, and, and the family and you have this thing about the angel of death. Um, what, it was your mother's birthday. So take us to what happened on your mother's birthday, the call, then, then there's a whole mess of stuff in the book that explains a lot of this. Uh, but before you do that, folks, I'm talking to Carla Cringer. Did I say that right, yes. Carla Cringer? And the book is called It's a Wonderful Unfinished Life. And Andy, why don't you put that website up? Um, uh, I'm going to try to say the word ex, ex libris, ex libris, right? Ex libris. Ex libris. Well, I might, you're, you're right, Andy. <laughs> Just put it up on the screen. Ex libris. Yes. Okay, libris. Okay. We're going to take a break, folks, and we come back. You're going to, it's an interesting story uh, about all the emotions and what happens after a tragedy. But the most important thing is it was a tragedy that could have definitely been without question, as she says in a book. 100% preventable. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. Remember, you can watch any of my shows on ssptv.com. Just click on the Sam LaSanne Show, as well as all the other shows, the girls all around the town. You name the show, we produce 21 of them, as you know. Uh, and my email is sam at ssptv.com. My guest today, folks, he wrote the book, it's a wonderful unfinished life, uh, Carla Cringer. Cringy. Cringer. Cringer. Okay. I'm doing well with these names today. <laughs> uh, I got the ex libris right. That's okay. Correct. I'll get your name right. Your father, Jojo Gelati, was, was killed um, in a car accident, okay, by a drunk driver. Yeah. That was confirmed, okay? Yeah. All right. Now, your father, um, prior to, you know, that unfortunate thing, uh, let's talk about his personality and your mother's personality, which I think is, is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. They both just had, they're both very much jokesters. My mm -hmm. dad, as I said, he just had a way, I have to say, it was like a charisma. I, I don't know how to explain <laughs> it because there's, there's just, there was just something about it, mm -hmm. about him, and he, he just drew, especially people that were different or that might have been seen like as outsiders or unique in some way, he seemed to have a way, you know, he would, he would joke and he'd say, God knows where to send them. They send them all to me, you yeah, know, yeah. just, just <laughs> joking because that it, it, it was, that it was just part of his nature. And it's you interesting know? because he would say that it was a good day when he woke up in the morning because his name wasn't in the obituary. In the obituary. Yeah. And we had many conflicts over that because I hate it when he said that. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
Now, it's your mother's birthday. Yes. Okay, and, and I know it's hard to, to, to talk about this, but tell us what happened that day of her, her birthday. Um, it, was, it was a beautiful day across Pennsylvania, I will tell you that. There were record-breaking temperatures, and um, it was one of those days where I'm not a morning person, and I, it was one of those days I wanted to get out of bed. I jumped out of bed before the alarm went off. Um, things were really on the up. Things were really good in my life. Um, really good. I was anticipating, hoping, getting a job. I had a job. I had my great husband, two wonderful kids. Um, I had planned, I, I had been asked, and my family always came down for their birthdays. My, my parents, that's how I celebrate them. I would ask them down to dinner. So um, that's what we had planned for April 24th, 2008. My parents were planning to come down, and I'm Italian by background. Um, so ziti and meatballs and the toss salad were definitely on the menu. Um, the toss salad, my dad didn't eat any meal without his toss salad and an Italian dressing. Um, so those were, those were on, the, uh, on the, the menu for the day. And I was preparing and the phone rang and the first time it rang, um, it was my sister. She lives in Sugar Notch and she was calling to see if I needed anything to let me know her and my niece who was um, 18 months at the time, I think, 18 months. Um, at the time of the uh, crash were on their way and she said, did I need anything? I said, no, be careful and I'll see you in a few minutes. And a few minutes later, my daughter yelled up that she was jumping in the shower. And um, so I heard the, sh the ba bathroom door close and the shower go on and then the phone rang again. And when I looked at the caller ID, I thought it was my mom. That's whose number came up. So um, I picked up that phone expecting to hear her to say the same thing that she and my dad were on their way. And instead I was greeted by a, a police officer. And I remember first saying to him, is this a joke? Um, and he said, no, ma'am. And I said, he said, um, he asked for me. And I, and I didn't said this, that he was speaking to Carla. And he said, there's been an emergency. You need to get to your mom's. And, you know, the first thing I asked was, was it a joke? And when he responded, no. And I said, well, what kind of emergency? And he said, ma'am, you just need to get to your mom's. And I think I went into immediate denial. I honestly did. I continued to make dinner. Um, my husband had, was in the kitchen as, as he heard only my end of the conversation and my questioning and he said, who was that? I think I was in shock, really. And I said, uh, it was a police officer. I don't even know the police officer's name, honestly, to this day, I don't know. And he said, honey, we need to, to get to your mom's. And, um, you know, your mind goes into complete, you know, you're, you're happy one minute and it's chaos the next. And, so I went and I knocked on my, my, the bathroom door and I told my daughter we needed to get to her granny's and you know I could hear the panic in her voice, um, what kind of emergency and I said I didn't know that I would call her as soon as I knew. And then the next thought was to my sister and I, how do I reroute her? She's now on their way to my house. How do I get her to go to my mom's knowing she's driving alone? You know, panic. I'm trying not to panic although I I don't know. So I, I made a call as calmly and I could hear the fear in her voice and I could hear her voice cracking and the first question she asked is, anybody talk to dad? And I said no, that I, you know, we, were, we were on route and um, we made it as far as the Walmart on uh, the Beltway in Hazleton and I called my mom back on the cell phone as my husband drove and the same officer answered the phone. And um, I repeated again, I was on my way and could he please tell me and he, you know, very, um, said, no, ma'am, you need to get here as quickly as possible. And I don't know how I knew. Maybe it was instinct. I don't know. But the next question must have caught him off guard because I just said, was my dad killed in an accident? And he said, yes, ma'am. And um, wow. so I, I don't know why my mind immediately went there. So here, here you, go, you, you bring some things up that I, I think we, we could all relate with. Now, you said something about... Your life was doing, doing very well. You were, you know, on top of the things. Bishop Timlin sat where you, you know, where you sat and, and on this show, and he said, we talked about people in life that everything's doing good and they don't need God in their lives because they got their jobs, they got SUVs, and who needs to go to church, whether they're Protestant, Catholic. And, and this, is, this is when we're talking about having a faith, and you need to have any kind of faith. And I feel sorry for people that don't, whether it's Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, or whatever. 
But you, you, he says, until you hit a bump in the road. Mm -hmm. And you hit a bump in the road that day, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the, the, what, what you explain in his book, you start explaining all of the things that, have, that take place you know, you, 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 you know, so when you got home, or you, to, your, to your home, I, 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 I could only imagine, Carla, what it was to go there and then to realize that your father's death was really senseless. It, mm -hmm. It's something that should have never happened. God forbid you want, if you want your, your loved ones to die, let them die of old age, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and what, how, did that, how, was I, how did that make you feel? It really, the first, to be honest with you, those first 24 hours, our only source of information was really the media. And it was so hard. You know, when you pick up the morning newspaper, it's always somebody else's tragedy yes. on the front page. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that morning of April 25th, when I woke up, it was my story, my family, my tragedy on the front page. And for a long time, even though I wrote letters to the editor, and even though I did a lot with the media, honestly, I didn't pick up a newspaper to read the newspaper probably for a year afterwards. It was just too hard to see somebody else's story because every time I saw someone else's story, I relived my own. And you stayed in here writing this part of the book where you're talking about your, your dad and, and the, the grief that you went through. It says was very, very difficult because just remembering that day brings all the pain rushing back and it will continue to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. As many people who are watching this show have gone through those things, I think one of the lessons is senseless. Is it's a senseless debt because the person was uh, intoxicated and drinking while driving. Uh, we, we know what happened, uh, what happens, and, and here it is, it destroys an entire uh, life, uh, family's life. Folks, I'm talking to Carla Cringer, I mm -hmm. said it correctly, Carla Cringer, and put the website up to get the book is called It's a Wonderful Unfinished Life. The interesting about the, the interesting about this book, folks, is is it's it explains everything, but all of the emotional parts of what happens in families and then we go into the what happens in the legal part. And that's a very interesting thing, what happens and all the things that happen. She goes through all the, uh, the preliminary um, uh, hearings. She goes through the, the actual uh, court case and what happens in the dealings with the assistant district attorney and, and the whole bit. And it's, it's so interesting in knowing what goes on because this is something that we all live with. We come back, we'll learn about what's going on today and what lessons do we learn from uh, this unfortunate accident. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lasant. Appreciate all those uh, emails you're sending me at sam at sspTV.com. The name of the book, folks, it's called It's a Un Wonderful Unfinished Life, and it's written by Carla Cringer. Uh, uh, it's about her daddy, uh, and I, when I saw the picture, I know who her daddy is, uh, Jojo Gelati. Uh, he was the unofficial mayor of uh, McAdoo and Claris, Pennsylvania. Uh, Fabulous uh, personality he had and, and was loved by everyone. As evidence, when you had the wake, you said there was 500 people that Over showed up. 500. Okay, so when we, before we did the show, um, when I have a person who writes a book, I always like to find out what do you want our viewers to get from this book? Because you detail everything from the beginning, how you're happy, your life, the tragic thing that happens, your sisters, your, your children. And here's something where you were so involved and so involved where your, father, your husband sat you down one day in August and, I, and he said, uh, Carla, you lost your dad. And folks, you could all relate to this. Carla, you lost your dad and I lost my father-in-law. But now, I feel like I'm losing my wife and the kids are losing their mother. Mm -hmm. How'd that make you feel? Um, I think being slapped in the face would, would have been less stunning, you know, because I felt like the tragedy had already taken so much away from us that the last thing I wanted to do was have that affect my relationship with my do, husband. So, and, and that happens, okay, because, mm -hmm. you know, my father died of a massive heart attack, okay, and, and I told you I, I, I grieved terribly from it, very upset with myself, and I kept saying, if only I would have called my dad, if only mm -hmm. I would have visited him a little bit more, I mean, if only I would have done that, and it drives you crazy, it okay. Does. What, what did you do? Um, I did all those things. I did all the uh, if-onlys and for a long time until I got through all the legal 
stuff, you know, I, I had to take a, a step back sometimes and I had to give myself time to breathe and accept that not everybody was in the same place that I was. My husband, you know, his relationship with my dad was close, but he was the son-in-law. My, my children got to, my daughter got to the point, she said, Mom, I just can't, I can't talk about it every day. I have to, you know, so each one of us, it was learning how to respect each other's feelings and respect where, where we were at in the grieving process, because it's a process. It's not an event. It doesn't go away, you know, three days when the person's buried that, you know, I, I think I said in the book, you, you don't, it would be nice if you could bury your feelings and everything right along with the person, but it's after that. So, okay, we've established that it was, he was killed by a drunk driver, and the message here is, folks, you just don't drink and drive, it's just a senseless death. But now, all these lives were affected, okay? And everyone who was watching us could relate to something, somebody in their homes, okay? So my, let's assume your parents are still alive, okay? What do you recommend to people who, who are, parents are still alive? Spend time with them. Tell them, I wish I would have told my dad a lot of things. I wish I would have told him, you know, my husband says he wasn't that kind of person. He knew how you felt, but I wish I would have. You think sometimes have. parents like to hear from their children uh, or grandchildren, children saying, you know what, Daddy, I love you. Ab you know, absolutely. Mommy, I love you. I appreciate okay? you. I, I appreciate value yeah, you. Yeah. Yes. But yet they take things for granted sometimes until like, you hit that bump in the road. Mm -hmm. And it's always that rough, hard lesson, okay? Now, you, do you ever think that God works in funny ways and, and He allows certain things to happen? Because you today, by writing this book, and being able to send a message, okay, of all the things that are happening, and your good friend Joe Clifford, who is a fabulous person, he's a, I'm, I'm proud to say he's a friend of mine, and his wife and his family. My kids played with their kids. The thing is that, that you wrote this book. Do you realize how many maybe lives you, you're going to save by writing this book? I hope. That's, that's all I can do. I know you, you know, I, I, I hope to do that. See, I Joe, hope to help. your father, Jojo, is saying, you know, Carla, you're doing the right thing here. You know, my, maybe my passing is, is sending a message to a lot of people. You ever think of that? I, I do. I, 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 that's what I think when we were going through the process, and it was really important. I mean, when I met with the district attorney, I did not want him to be seen as a statistic. Like, my father had a life, and he had a family, and he was a he was he was a human being. He wasn't a number, number you know, eleven thousand victim for that particular year, and that was really important for me to to say that that he had a wonderful life and that he had people that loved him. And if you ever get an opportunity, if viewers ever get an opportunity to go to the DUI Memorial Garden in Harrisburg, they will see how many wonderful under, unfinished lives there are. Yes. You know, and and the thing is that you know, I always say things happen for reasons. Okay, and and your dad, your daddy Jojo, okay, is looking down, saying, "I'm proud of you, Carla." Mm -hmm. Okay, I really, so. yeah, I, well, I believe that. I really do because when you have good, wholesome people like this, okay, and some unfortunate things happen, there's always a message to be told, and the message here is saying families that are not talking to each other doesn't it break your heart. Mm -hmm. It does. It really does. When you have yeah. a parent, a mom, a dad, I, I don't know what they could have done in their lives that you do not talk to them. Brothers and sisters that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you, this could be a message. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I hope it helps a lot of people. I hope it helps people with grieving. I hope it helps people understand when people are grieving what they might be like, you know. I know I wasn't 100% the same person, and I don't think that I ever will be. Are you getting back? I'm getting back, yeah. but there's always going to be a piece of there's me always, that's different yeah, now, yeah, yeah. you know. But l l let it be told that you have done a great job, and your family is, is certainly a great asset to, to what they've done, all your relatives, uh, and uh, you should see, be so proud. You are proud of your daddy, but I know he's proud of you and your family for, for this particular book, and, and a lot of people are going to are going to enjoy a they're going to be, you're going to be saving a lot of lives. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Carl. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, it's a fabulous book, folks. It's called It's a Wonderful Unfinished Life. And you can get this book. Uh, put the uh, website up. Uh, I'm going to say that. What's that word again? Ex Libris. Ex <laughs> it could be like <laughs> W.W. Carl or something like that. But that's the, that's the uh, website. And it's, uh, her name is Carla Cringer. Okay. Um, and his name, is, his name is, was Jojo Gelati. Fabulous family, folks. Uh, and it's a book that I highly recommend you reading. It's, there's so many lessons to be learned from this book, folks, you to be very impressed. 
We'll see you next time.